is a Fox 10 News alert. Approximately 60 miles north of China Lake uh, impacted the ground. We are currently in an active state of looking for the pilot. We've got folks out there from our installation, China Lake, the National Park Service, and the local authorities involved in that process. That's all I've got at this time. All right, we'll be taking questions. When something like this happens, is the pilot able to eject himself from the aircraft? And is this a matter of seeing where he actually landed on a parachute? Is that how it works? It depends on the situation. That is certainly possible, yes. All right, let's try here. Sorry from the left. Go. Sorry, ma'am. Question? Sorry, okay. question? Is there anybody uh, we've got reports that there were civilians injured on the ground. I know that they were treated on scene. I don't have any follow-on information on that. We're continuing to work with the local authorities to determine the situation. Do you know a uh, number or just... The number I was passed was seven. I have not confirmed that. I don't know whether that was accurate. Okay. So do we know if the pilot in this incident ejected from the plane? Uh, it's too premature at this time. We're continuing to search. We do not know that at this time. And for those possible civilians injured, do we know if they were spectating out there? That that's a popular site for folks to take uh, that, again, that's speculation at this point. I don't know what they were doing out there. So far, during the search and rescue, sorry, signs. over this gentleman. Logistically, when a uh, plane crashes, we're known as war. What do you guys do to follow up on that? Sorry, so that question again. What's the protocol when, the, when a sort of incident like this happens? Uh, we have a mishap plan that we put in place that's specifically designed for situations like this to make sure that we get everything taken care of, whether it's the aircraft, the air crew, or even the uh, issues associated within the squadron. Sir? Are you able to tell us if the pilot's a female, male, their extent I, of, I mean, I do not. background information, how nope. long they've been flying? I do not. Yeah, at, the, at, the, at, this, at this point, the search for the individual is the important thing, so I, I, I honestly do not know male, female, lieutenant, lieutenant commander. I just know that we're actively looking for the individual. Jet's lifespan is 6,000 hours, and then we put it into a program to expand the lifespan. Via, years, it depends. It's hours. The more we fly them, the sooner they go. Is this area where this happened? Is that an area where our jets here typically practice? Yes, it's uh, Rainbow Canyon. We have a, a military low-level route that flies through there. We use it for training. And as a follow-up to that question, um, is there an estimate of how many miles that jet had flown prior to this? Uh, I have, it, it, certainly I could get that information, but I don't have that information available at this time. What is the primary, I guess, role of this particular fighter jet? Say again, sorry. The primary Car. role of this particular fighter jet, what is that? The F-18 is a strike fighter. We do air-to-ground, air-to-air. We're a multi-mission fighter, so we, we do it all. Can we talk about maybe the terrain or why it is that a lot of those uh, operations are done over there, the training practices? What makes them a good area for pilots to practice in? It's a dynamic environment, and we train to the highest of standards, so we hold ourselves to those high standards, and we do that in training so that when we achieve combat, we achieve success. The, the investigation is ongoing at this time. I, I do not have that information. I do not know that. At this time, during the search and rescue, have, has there been any indication, you know, where the aircraft is, whether it be pieces of it or anything to indicate where uh, it likely landed at some point? Yes, it impacted the ground in the vicinity of Rainbow Canyon. Have you there. seen evidence of that? No, I have not, but I know that there are folks on the ground that are actively searching around the crash site. So the assumption is that a crash site equals an airplane on the ground. Very preliminary research. It looks like this type of crash is very rare. Has this happened at this base from what you can recall? Uh, in this location, not to my knowledge, no. I mean, we've had mishaps here before, but you know, in various locations, but not in this particular location. Uh, I know that as we were being prepped for this press conference, we talked about how these are your parts, these are your pilots that you oversee. Have I understood that correctly? Say that again, your part. Uh, these are your planes, and these are the parts of the plane that you oversee. He is, he is a Commodore, and these squadrons fall under him in a chain of command. How difficult is this for you right now, given your personal connection to what's happening? 
extremely difficult. So we're, we're looking for an aviator out there, hoping for the best. So I'm always optimistic, but we've got processes and procedures in place to make sure that we can execute even through the most challenging times, and we're currently running those procedures right now. I understand it was a single seat fighter jet. Was the pilot flying with other pilots as well? It was a two plane, so there were two aircraft flying and training. Did the other aircraft, the pilot on board, give any indication where he likely saw the plane? I have not talked to the other pilot. I know that he's back, but I have not had an opportunity to speak with him or debrief him or even get a readout of what he brought back post the flight. When you guys are practicing these uh, maneuvers, are the aircraft uh, equipped with uh, live ammunition? It depends. You know, we, we carry live ammunition for certain training missions, and this flight was a scheduled low level, so I'm anticipating that they were not carrying live ammunition. But again, that's speculation. I don't have that information specifically at this time. We see different videos, photos of uh, similar aircraft uh, that have flown kind of low to the ground. Is that common uh, during training exercises? This is a low level, so that's the purpose of the route is to fly low to the ground. crews that are going to stay out there through the night. Okay. Again, you kind of just mentioned that she, you know, asked a question about how difficult this is for you. Uh, you said you've never kind of experienced something like this happening before. Uh, in these moments, what's kind of going through your head? The, the pilot. Somebody's out there. we got to find him. And I said him as a generic him. I don't know that it's a him. And the one thing I'd like to say is, you know, we train to the highest of standards in order to achieve, you know, perfection in combat. So we sustain that standard in training. And then the other thing I'd like to highlight is, you know, Lemoore is a unique community. We're a very tight-knit community. So as we move through this process, the base, the community around us, the folks here are always good about supporting the military and supporting the community. So I appreciate everything that's going to occur in the future, regardless of the outcome. I thank everybody for everything they've done to date just on this one incident. So thank you. Always wanted to stand behind this. Um, did everybody get everything they need? Uh, yeah, I have my cell phone for follow up, my email. Um, so I'm just going to give you another email address. And it's going to be uh, F35C. All right, everybody, you just heard the devastating news there out of California, not too far away from Los Angeles. Again, my name is Pilar Arias. Good evening. It's 5.07 here in Phoenix, Arizona, same time in California. A U.S. Navy fighter jet crashed in Death Valley National Park, injuring seven people who were at a scenic overlook where aviation enthusiasts routinely watch military pilots speeding low through a chasm dubbed Star Wars Canyon. A search is underway for the pilot of the single FA-18 Super Hornet that was on the routine training mission. That's according to Lieutenant Commander Lydia Bach, who is a spokeswoman for Naval Air Station Lee Moore. Ambulances were sent to the crash site near Father Crowley Overlook, but it wasn't clear if anyone was transported for further medical treatment. Sorry, guys, you are hearing Times Square there while I was talking. Initial reports are that seven park visitors had minor injuries. Again, the Navy says the crash happened about 60 miles north of China Lake, and you just heard the latest there from a press conference. The lookout point, again, popular with photographers and aviation buffs who gawk at jets flying, training missions in the steep, narrow canyon. U.S. and foreign militaries train pilots and test jets in the gorge officially called Rainbow Canyon near the park's west entrance. Training flights are almost a daily feature with jets so low when they fly by 
the rim of the canyon that those watching can often see the pilot's facial expressions. The jet was from Strike Fighter Squadron VFA-151 stationed at Lemoore. The squadron is part of an air group attached to the aircraft carrier USS John C. Stennis. The Super Hornet is a twin-engine warplane designed to fly from either aircraft carriers or ground bases on both air superiority and ground attack missions. So very sad news there. They are still looking for an aviator that you just heard there. What we're told the seven injured were on the ground. So if we learn any new developments, we will certainly let you know. Fox 10 Phoenix did a story there at the site dubbed Star Wars Canyon not long ago. I will be covering this on Fox 10 Extra News at 7, Channel 45, Cable 9. So stay with us on air and online for the latest. Meanwhile, I'm going to take you out to the East Coast now where we have an overture.